Narration by Jack Sanders, featuring System Zero as the Doctor. Well, why did you do it? The question was so dryly put and unemotional. It was a simple string of words, but I didn't think there was any simple answer. I shrugged. I don't like myself. The tall man flipped through some papers on a clipboard and then, then asked, Did that start before or after the accident? I suppressed an eye roll. Well, Doc, the easiest response would be the accident, although I can't say I was a great human being before that. But really, it started when I realized I could see how people die. The accident, I answered, knowing that if I told him the truth, I end up locked away for a very, very long time. He continued reviewing the paperwork that detailed what the accident had medically caused and how I had been treated. I tried my best not to look at him. I didn't want to look at anyone anymore. I knew he was dressed up in a crisp white coat with a blue button-up and black slacks. I knew he had short sandy blonde hair and dark eyes. I knew what he was supposed to look like, but that's not what I saw. What I saw was a gaping knife wound in the side of his neck. Blood soaked clothes, a torn shirt from another stab wound in his abdomen. I saw dirt and tiny pebbles stuck to the side of his face from falling on the ground. I saw pale, dead skin and smelled steak and bourbon. The smells were usually worse, but at least this time it was bearable enough that I didn't gag. All right then, Clarissa. I'm going to send in a request for a psych evaluation and some blood work first thing in the morning. I'll expect you to stay here for the 72-hour observation period, which is standard for people who've attempted suicide previously. Hopefully we can figure out why you're feeling this way. And if the accident did somehow cause it, we can get you fixed up and on your way soon. But for now, try to get some rest. I just nodded and laid back against the pillow. The doctor put the truck back in its place and walked out the door. I glanced at the girl in the bed next to mine. She seemed engrossed in some TV show about a detective or something. I rolled over to my side, facing away from her, closed my eyes, and let myself drift off to sleep, aided by the painkillers in my system. When I awoke, it was completely dark in the room, and my bed felt alien to me. I looked around at the bland surroundings and remembered I was in a hospital. Something seemed off, though. It was a smell. I sprung into a sitting position quickly when I realized I was smelling smoke. I couldn't hear any alarms going off or any chaos in the hall, so I was left confused and a little terrified. I pushed myself out of bed and walked through the closed door, peeking through the windows and seeing nothing amiss. But it smells like there's a fire. How can no one else notice that? I thought. A sense of panic gripped me in my chest. I took a few deep breaths and moved into the bathroom, shutting the door behind me. When the small room became bathed in the fluorescent light, I saw my reflection, a pale, thin girl that desperately needed to eat and sleep, and uh, stop seeing dead things. It clicked then that I was probably smelling the fire from someone's death. Maybe someone had been admitted to the next room, or there was a nurse that was destined to die in some sort of blaze. This thought helped calm me down a bit, used the toilet, washed my hands, and splashed some water on my face before exiting the bathroom and climbing back into my small, white, impersonal hospital bed. I don't hate hospitals really, but I hated how vanilla they were. There was almost never any color or character. I sat in the bed, absentmindedly staring towards the window, which was on the wall closest to the other patient. When I realized she was sound asleep, half curled up on her side, facing me, she looked normal. From the little light shining in from the window over the door on my side of the room, and the lights from the parking lot shining through the window on her side of the room, I could see, other than some bruises and scratches on her arms and cheek, she didn't look dead. She looked alive. She was looked like she was supposed to, but why? There was movement in my peripheral, and I felt my breath involuntarily catch my lungs. I followed the movement to look under her bed. On her back lay a girl, almost identical to the one in the bed. 
She was reaching up and running her fingers over the bottom of the bed. Her arms were darkened and dirty. Her hair was splayed around her head and looked singed. Suddenly, she slammed her hands palm down to the floor on each side of her and snapped her head to look at me. Then I realized where the smoke smell had come from now. Half her face was covered in black and crispy skin that looked like it was falling and peeling away from the bone. I saw that she had the pale skin of a corpse where it wasn't covered in dirt or charred beyond recognition. I choked and gagged on the sudden wave of burnt flesh and the hair that assaulted my nose and my throat. She stared at me, both of us frozen for at least a minute. Then she slowly raised her finger to her lips and whispered, Shh. I felt myself barely nod. The burned girl pulled herself slowly from under the bed, on the opposite side from me. I watched as her dead legs bent and sh shuddered while she positioned herself to stand. When she was standing, still doubled over at the waist, I moved my gaze from below the bed to above it, where she was standing next to her living twin. There were barely audible pops and a slight wheezing as she fully righted herself. She gently placed a hand burned with section of white bone showing on the shoulder of the sleeping girl. She looked at the girl with what I can only describe as love and compassion, as if she cared deeply for her. I saw her grip tighten around the girl's shoulder and her black nails dig into the fabric of her hospital gown. Those dead eyes flashed up at me once again and a wide, malicious smile spread across her twisted face. The half that was destroyed gave a slight ripping noise as the corner of her mouth tore open to make her smile even wider. In one quick motion, she reached over, yanked the girl's jaw open, and crawled on top of her. The broken, blistered, and scorched body contorted with the awful tears, pops, and cracks as it forced itself into the girl's mouth and down her throat. I watched in horror, unable to move, to scream, to breathe. Right before the sleeping girl's mouth closed, I saw something bright in her throat. The dead girl's eye looking out at me. Once again, I heard. Shh.